All right, now everybody thinks I'm a moron because I don't understand metamorphosism and recrystallization and all that stuff. Well, I do understand. I don't believe it. I, it, it works that way, I agree, but the source of the crystallization is not flocculation where the things flocculate back together like flocking birds. It is because they are flocked together by the processes of life. These are things, and the entire earth, as far as I can determine, from as far deep as I can think, to the top of the earth here is nothing more than life. And the only thing that isn't life is decrystallized life that is volcanically shot back up to the surface to repopulate the surface with with molecular pieces of these elements so that they can be absorbed again and create new crystals to get subducted and become decrystallized and then shot back up through volcanism to repopulate the, the food source. I mean that's the way it works. I can't see any other way. And, and the deep, 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 deep way down past where there's supposed to be fossils, they're finding oil and signs of life. I believe the petroleum industry agrees that there is fossils way down below where there is not supposed to be any life. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think so. I found that in many places on the internet. Could be totally wrong, could be all lies. But they say when they drill, drill some of these deep, deep, deep rocks, they, the, the, the rocks come out so heavily embedded with, with methane and natural gas, they fizzle like Alka-Seltzers. But anyway, the, the life goes from top to bottom, and it's decrystallized, not recrystallized. And that's what I'm saying. So I know how this stuff works. I don't believe it. I don't believe that the, the flocking together of the minerals like this is from just they all decide they want to get back together. No, I do not believe that. That your tendons create little plagioclase balls. Um, the, the, your blood creates garnets. Uh, all of this stuff can be accounted for. You got iron and you got your carbon and all of that stuff as the organic materials sublimate out, they go through, through transitions. They start out as, as gooey molecules and cells and things. And as they start to gas those volatile organics off, they gas away, they sublimate, they vaporize. And what you're left with is the, the harder things, your, your, your uh, metals and, 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 and that sort of stuff uh, up through the carbon. And, and those do crystallize. I agree with exactly what they're saying. After you get that stuff together, it does exactly the way they're saying it. I have no complaint with that at all. Uh, crystals form, they propagate, they da 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 Yes. However, they did not flocculate back together by recrystallization. No. They were there together and they became crystallized and, and grew crystals and, and took on extra uh, the percolates that come down through the soil adhered to them to you know these organic compounds which are highly ionic they have a, looking for a lot of pluses a lot of minuses there's a lot of interchange of of materials and I believe that the feldspar is a product of cellular nucleophilic reactions and the cells themselves become changed and in the original uh, before they get deeply deeply subducted and heavily affected by pressures and temperatures they originally become quartz type feldspar and I'm doing a uh, test right now and hopefully that'll prove this because I have chicken <laughs> actually and I have some some other types of meat that are being uh, electroplated really by different types of, of um, substrates uh, sand and um, clay and mud and potting soil and all that stuff. I'm going to see what because once you introduce them into an electric field and and the pro, you know the, the electricity flows through it there's going to be a change there's going to be some change 
So we're going to find out what they are, and I'm going to need that analyzed. But it's been working for a few months now. I know it, it could take a long time. I have no clue. In the ground, it are extremely small currents, and they take a very, 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 very long time. So it could take millions of years, and I could even be dead by then. So anyway... We'll find out, but it, it shouldn't take long. I'm running a 12-volt battery uh, through it. But anyway, the, the, all of this stuff, if you read through, it's about met metamorphosis. I have no problem with any of that stuff, except I have a problem with the how it all got together in the first place. But when you get down to here, this is where it starts to get important, and this is how these things react under certain depths and under certain pressures, and they go through these zones. And there's your garnet zone right there. The garnets in the blood and so forth. Originally, they, they get like um, taffy looking. Um, and you can see that on that petrified head. Uh, and, and later, and, and then up in this area, I think it might be like that taffy looking stuff. And then they turn into garnets. And as they get squished and heated and all that sort of stuff. And longer and longer and longer. And then they get harder and harder and so forth. And th all this stuff, I, I really don't have a big problem with any of this. It's just that the, it's recrystallization. No, it's decrystallization once it gets deep in the earth. But I, I agree with almost everything that I'm reading here, except how it all started off. All right, natural gas is the byproduct of of the decay of this organic material, this um, sublimation, the vaporization of the carbon, cracking the carbon molecules, uh, um, the car carbohydrate molecules. Anyway, the natural gas primarily is, is methane. Uh, natural gas um, consists primarily of methane, but commonly includes other things, alkalines and carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and so forth. But the point is, is that these are the byproducts of organic decomposition. And that is what creates natural gas. And the residue that's left over, the keratins, the, the, or, or keratins or whatever they refer to them as, those are the fibers that don't gas off like this. Those are the, and they end up becoming the coal instead of petroleum or, or natural gas. Right, this is a little more about the geology of the Earth and why I believe that the Earth appears to have been pretty much alive. This is methane clarates, clathrate, and they're literally methane ice cubes. Methane comes from life, it's, uh, and, and it's seeping up through these deep, deep structures in the Earth. And look, it says the uh, composition depends on how many methyl molecules, various cage structures in a water lattice. Observed density is around 0.9 grams per cubic centimeter, which means that methane hydrate will float, now listen, will float to the surface of the sea or of a lake unless it is bound in place by being formed or anchored to sediment. So it was formed deep within the sediments and coming up and then adhering to the sediments somehow uh, molecularly probably uh, you know magnetically or something of that nature crystal formations and then they well probably crystal formations like ice forms around some little nucleus of some sort and anyway at that point they start you get these concretions of methane but the point is is they started by life that was life deep 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 down coming up and and that's all I can surmise. I don't think that methane just, although it may be originating from internally in the earth, I can't discount that. But but it's it's certainly to me likely that it has a life origin. 